Hello, good evening and welcome to PM Express. Tonight we're discussing school feeding program in retrospect. Now, when the school feeding program was introduced in 2004 and subsequently piloted in 2006, it had three main objectives. One, reducing hunger and malnutrition in primary school children, increasing school enrollment attendance and retention in primary schools, and three, boosting domestic food production. So, which of these aims can we say has so far been achieved? Also in 2007, the program was rocked with some huge scandal. The story was that it was providing a steady stream of illicit income for some individuals. This accusation saw the program head, Dr. Amako Tufo, being sacked. Five years down the line, the same man is at the center of yet another corruption scandal. This time, it's alleged that he has caused some 1.1 million in judgment debts for failing to pay for cooking utensils costing 44,000 Ghana cities. Tonight, we'll do an overhaul of the school feeding program from when it was launched up until now and ask ourselves if, as a nation, it is a policy worth continuing. What are your own thoughts and assessment? of the program. You can join us via text 1760 or post your comments, contributions and suggestions on our Facebook portals. I have with me in the studio tonight and I'm privileged to have Dr. Amwako Tufo, former school feeding program boss, joining us on PM Express. It's great to have you, sir, and thanks for joining. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You must be a happy man. Recently, you won a, a case against government for kicking you out of job. Yes, I'm always very happy because I have God on me, on my side, all the time. And it has nothing to do with whether you won the case against government or not? No, because I knew I would win it because I hadn't done anything wrong. Uh, the Auditor General had been asked to do extensive auditing of accounts and everything. I was, I was found to be very clean. And your money and has clear. been paid to you? Um, I've got judgment. But I think uh, politics is setting in uh, in terms of uh, payment. So um, uh, there are a few delays here and there, but definitely I will get it. You're very certain you're going to get it? Oh, absolutely. Well, what, what are the few politics that are seeping in? I mean, if you well, secure judgment, yes, should it, it be difficult to be paid? Yeah, it takes uh, at times, if it's an understanding uh, system, they will pay you immediately or soon after. But if there are intentional delays and whatever attitudes come in, then uh, you either have to be patient or uh, deal with it. You have said recently that, in your opinion, the school feeding program is collapsing. On hindsight, do you think um, we shouldn't have started the school feeding program at all? My goodness. If you ask me to start it 10 times, I will. It is a very important program, but it's for those who don't understand it. That is why it becomes uh, a bit of a problem for them. Um, to start with, let me even go back a little bit. There are people I have to recognize before this program. The, today marks the 10th anniversary of uh, Balfour Sei Akoto, uh, one of the serious founders of NLM that tend to be UP and then uh, our tradition, political tradition, NPP. And then I would like to also mention that Nanado uh, Dankwa Ekufuado, our Nkoswahene, that's a new title we're giving. Uh, for the continuity of this program. This is relevant to your question because um, if someone has an insight as to how important it is, what does it do, what are the advantages of it, that is what will determine whether it's an important program or not, whether it has to continue. First of all, you've mentioned about uh, children feeding on nutritional food and growing well. It also helps with national health budget. If a child eats well and all that, 
you know, it prevents sickness and all the other things. That's number one. It also reduces their short-term hunger and uh, malnutrition, as we've said, makes them go to school. So you're producing educated children for the nation eventually. Um, then there is a fight against poverty. See, when you have food, food crops being produced on a big scale, as the schools increase, the numbers increase, you hit a million, two million, what you are actually doing is that you're creating markets Big market you see, day Dr. Makutu, for, um, you see, Dr. Makutufo, what you're saying were things we knew when the program started because it was put out there in the public that one, it will reduce hunger, more nutrition in primary schools. Two, it will increase school enrollments and retention in primary schools and boost domestic food production. But both through the government of the MPP and the NDC, we're not seeing this. No, it is because after we had started, the, the, the new government, that is NDC government, did not follow the recommendations that had been put forward. You recommendations see? of yeah. continuity or Conti recommendations and, and then of what? How, how to tighten the screws on the program. So you admit there were screws to be tightened by oh, the time yeah, you were for leaving continuity, office? For continui continuity's sake. Yes, definitely. I mean, for instance, uh, NDC wanted to shift the program into the hands of the DCEs per their manifesto, and that is wrong. Well, the manifesto said, uh, the section on school feeding program on the manifesto, the 2008 NDC manifesto uh, for a better Ghana, that was the manifesto upon which the Mills administration came into power. Now, the section on the school feeding program reads, and permit me, audience, to read, we shall review the framework for the implementation of the school feeding program, and in particular, streamline and strengthen the operational and delivery capacity of the program. Among the options to be considered is that of absorbing the program into the Ghana Education Service and putting it under the authority of the directors of education. It is also our intention to expand the program to cover all primary schools in the country. I guess they've been trying to extend the program to cover yeah, all primary schools. Yeah, but that is schools. exactly what I'm saying, that uh, that is where their problems began. We had problems with the DCEs, okay. Ministry of Education is okay, but you have a uh, Minister of Local Government in charge, which they still have. But there was in no mention words, of they, Minister of Local Government right, or in their DCEs in the manifesto. No, because when they came, they saw a realistic position of Minister of Local Government running it. And it was smart to leave it like that. So what they wrote in their manifesto is not what they are following. Secondly, there were problems with DCEs if you go and put the authority into the hands of the DCEs, there are times more or less the cooks, they sit on their monies. These are allegations or they're oh, facts. These are, you have concrete uh, evidence oh, to support. Oh, absolutely. I won't come and sit here and waste everybody's time with speculative uh, matters. No. As a guy who brought this program to this country, I was very much interested to know what was happening in the field. And I hope you won't push me to tell you all the things that were happening there. It would be great if you could. <laughs> you see, there are some cooks who are beautiful. And if they have to go to a DC to collect their monies, uh, to go and cook and all that, at times they are quite a serious approaches. And like if the women... sexual... Actually, uh, yes. Yes, that's what I mean. Sexual favors, yes. explicit sexual if, favors if, for, the, for contracts, right? And if the woman decides to be difficult, then uh, she has new difficulties in collecting her monies. Say so stuff like that. There were a few things like that. I mean, that's not what's important. I mean, you started this program by, by saying, oh, there were huge uh, misappropriation of debts. There was nothing like that. What was there? Look, 
you had a very easy, simple arithmetic of giving children three CDs per child per day, five days a week. It's very easy to calculate. There's, there's nothing that you can get in there. It was a political move by some people who wanted to harass the system because uh, MPP government was handling it. That is why the auditors came in. And I was very happy because I insisted on it. There was nothing like that. There were some malfunctions in certain places with some officials. They ended up with serious fraud office. So that aspect is a misrepresentation and misinterpretation. So I want, I hope you do some research. But there were, correct. but there were problems with the with the with the feeding program when the no, MPP I, I would was in power. Make, no, no, I will definitely come to that. I'll tell you about our challenges. You see, but I want us to appreciate the importance of the program. You see, not in those three terms that you you mentioned. For instance. We were leading the program into a point where, as people get interested in farming, it was to stimulate farming. And then, when you grow, say, granuts, soya beans, corn, rice, these are all basic inputs, our idea was to push the nation into adding value to those produce so that more people will feel excited to go into farming. The surplus foods that are coming from the grains and all that, the government would then buy them and then stock them in various districts as food security. That's one of the most important things of school feeding, for school uh, food security, okay? And then, of course, you get into a situation where if you are able to do that. It means your rice importation from outside will be reduced. Vegetable oils, you are producing them from your soya beans and all that, will also uh, uh, be reduced because you're producing them locally. Now, the factories that produce, turn the raw materials into that, will be making money, will be em employing more people. The students, the, the children will eat the uh, uh, food. What we prepared, grow. What we grow, you see. A and did, did all this happen when the MPP was in power? No, it, 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 we, had, we had staggered the programs and we're moving towards that. And then the government. So yes, you were progressively, progressively going through going all of these that. objectives. Oh, yes. And when the government, and I made a lot of noise about them, it was publicly announced and all that. But when the NDC government came, they, they weren't thinking along those lines. So it didn't happen. I'm saying that when we started, it was successful. When they came, it's messed up. And we want to come back and repair it and move it forward. You see, that is why I started by commending Adodanko uh, Kufuado and called him the Nkoswahini because of the most important element of adding value to our locally grown crops. Once you do that, you are facing real development for your nation. Once you do that, you're saving a lot of money you would otherwise use for importation. You save it for other things, okay? Now, we had challenges, or what you, you call problems. Or lapses. Or lapses. Now, right from uh, the initial stages, I knew there could be lapses, so I moved that we had internal auditors established so that they would look at the small things while some of us concentrate on the major things. Which, which were the small things in oh, your, in your mind accounts, and which were the, the, were the, the major accounts, things? The daily expenditure, the various things, the flow of funds. Uh, so that we don't get any... But some of the things which happened during the MPP were not small. I mean, there were issues with people um, providing the service and were not paid. The same problem that the NDC faced. No, not with school feeding. Let me tell you, those who provided kitchen inputs that were not paid was a big lapse for this government for the simple reason that it was proving 
that these people had supplied certain inputs. They are captured very clearly in the warehouses. Okay, instead of using them for the children, now some of these children share the same plates. You wait till I finish eating before I give you my plate to use. Some eat from polythene bags and stuff like that. Okay, and meanwhile, the supplies are there. So when those people who supply these things were not paid, they took the government to court and they won. They won. Meanwhile, the things are still in the warehouse. To me, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Uh, we're no. discussing the school feeding in retrospect. My name is Stephen Enti, and I have in the studio Dr. Amwako Tufo, who was the former boss of the school feeding program. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with more discussions. Don't go. Welcome back to PM Express. We are discussing the school feeding program in retrospect. You can send us your comments and your, your suggestions via text 1760 or post them on our Facebook wall. Now, Dr. Makutufo, before we went on the break, you started to talk about the challenges the MPP faced with the school feeding program. I reckon that having been in power, facing those challenges might have been a justifiable reason for which you were kicked out, you would say. No, 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 no. I was taken out. It turned out that when I brought the program, we started it. It's not very easy to start any new program in this country, okay? It became so popular that we started having consultants come in to ask us how we were able to get it started and taken off. And then a year or so later, I was invited to head the African network of school feeding programs. I was their pres first president. So it could not be because of performance. Two, it could not be because of mal uh, malfunctions and malfeasance or, or corruption. No, because there were uh, uh, auditors that came in as far as I was concerned. I couldn't say it for other people who had to go and face serious fraud office. Okay, so that gives you an indication that there were other people who might have mishandled things. Okay, now, one of the things that we did not do right was to control initially the influx from Ashanti and Greater Accra. These were regions that had the structures set up When you well. say influx, what exactly do you mean? There were a lot of people. I mean, in Accra, the headquarters was here. The, uh, the second national uh, office was based in Kumasi. So there were others who could reach us quickly. Okay, these people. And as a result, we had tremendous incre increases in numbers, okay? But- Numbers of what? Numbers of cooks, okay. and therefore schools, okay? But the whole objective is that every single school in this country has to be fed, okay? So the next phase was to try not to reduce them, but expand the other places and control these. So this were one major challenge we had, okay? Even though you have poor, and, and, and we had to also concentrate on poor communities. Of course, you cannot say Accra and Kumasi don't have poor neighborhoods, they do. You have a lot of people who come into the capital and the big cities because they and get stranded. Some go to school and have nothing to eat, even places to live. So that was, another basis that we used to characterize that. But later on, the idea was to readjust and expand to other, other places. And it became problematic. No, it wasn't problematic. It wasn't problematic, no. right. What happened was that when NDC came, they slashed off a lot from Ashanti and from Greater Accra and put into their political strongholds. Which, which the are? The northern areas and Volta. Now, the northern, we were initially careful in the sense that the Catholic relief 
services. Was We're already supplying providing food, food items. Exactly. You see, so this is why the numbers were a bit jaded like that. Now, the other problem we had was tomatoes. And of course, our political enemies immediately said, I, I prepared rotten tomatoes for the children. You know, did you? Can be very unfriendly. You see me here, I look like a cook. I didn't prepare it. What happened was that we had, I had a program that listen, we produce a lot of tomatoes in this country. There are tomato factories that are adding value to our tomatoes. If we can successfully uh, give incentives to these locally produced canned tomatoes and all that, we'll be helping this country's economy tremendously. So all these tomatoes coming from Italy and all that will be cut down and will make it compulsory for the schools. Now, we went in, we selected one fairly new factory in the uh, Brunhaf area. Unfortunately, they had a problem. You know, the, uh, the, the uh, toma canned tomatoes could not stand heat for, for certain months of storage. So they started going bad, but initially they were very good. Now, this funny story about the rotten tomatoes came in. When uh, some people opened the tomatoes and found them black, they had changed color, they wouldn't use it. It's an insult on women, on cooks, to say that you open a tomato that is bad, that has gone bad, and then you use it to cook for the children. They stopped and reported, and we went and collected all the refunds and returned them. Now, it is important to notice and always keep in mind that the whole idea of vegetable oil, rice, tomatoes, beans, was to make sure that we, as people, we increase the numbers in schools, more people go into farming, more people produce these grains. And these grains, the surpluses, can be bought by districts into their warehouses. Let's come back a little before I, I, I make you proceed. Let's come back to the Bunohavo region factory. Were there any laid out rules or, of, or procurement policies in place for which the Brunohavo factory was chosen, selected, or narrowed down to? You know, the factories, they, they had imported the equipment and all that. It was neat, clean, new. The people who were there appeared to be solid te technicians. They produced some. So we if I get you samples. right, you went around the whole country oh, yes. assessing facilities oh, that are yes. already in existence. Yes, because but we there were no there were no guidelines. No, there you were. You didn't have any there were. rigid guidelines. For instance, for doing that, did you? For instance, one aspect was that. Tomato is tomato. Good quality is good quality. You test it, whatever, the various ingredients, they did it at USD. They, they had write-ups and stuff like that. We were satisfied. Initial production, we were very satisfied. Then they ran into serious managerial problems. I don't want to destroy their business, so let me just hold it there like that. Which could not make us continue, and which broke my heart because the whole idea was to set up tomato producing factories uh, and, and get the others that had broken down to revive because now there were bases for people to produce more tomatoes to, to be bought for school feeding, which will have millions of people that are going to benefit from that on a daily basis. So made in Ghana tomato was now going to be a cherished item. But it just happened that they could not stand heat in enclosed areas for too long. We were not going into the technology. We were forced immediately to, to stop it. So that is one of the areas that I will personally advise whoever will handle it to go back and investigate whether we are now producing good enough tomatoes that we, 
as Ghanaians can benefit and stimulate our economy from it and create more jobs. People getting into farming to, to, to grow more tomatoes, not only tomatoes, soybeans, rice, all that are all important ingredients to children's food, school feeding, that can be done here rather than all the, the rice that is imported from outside and at times you get maggots in there. Okay. Um, I also said one of the challenges was naturally there are wrongdoers everywhere. Okay, if they do that, our auditors came in, they found some people uh, were okay, others were not okay, were sent to uh, SFO. So that is another matter. Um, I've already talked about the challenges from DCs and DCs officers. At times you get people who go in to try and collect their monies, and then some young officials will be trying to share the, in their profits. My, my suggestion at the time, which we will implement, is that you know how much a cook should get per period, a school term. This is the budget. It's easily calculated. If it's 40 days in a term or 60 days in a term, you multiply by uh, four cities or so per child per day. Simple. You will know the budget times the number of children in that classroom. So going in straight for their monies, send it to their banks so that when the government delays in sending the monies, the cooks can deal with the bank managers on business basis. Now, let me tell you, one of the problems that have come as a result of the present operators of school feeding is that instead of in our situation, we regarded the cooks, the women, as not having money. It's not a pre-financing thing. Finance our children's schools, okay? The government will then give them the money, cut for one term feed them or first 30 days, okay? Now, in this situation, you have uh, cooks that have not been paid for 60 days, two solid months. Now, where do they get the money from? But that's, bus that's now, business. It's their business. No, they no, should no, be able no, to no, no, no. plow themselves no, in no. for returns. They will make profit. Oh, profit is not really the initial motivation. There is a job for them to do. They have other cooks, cleaners, whatever. I'm saying the whole idea of the school feeding program being established was for the government to pre-finance, go and buy food and come and cook for our children. Not go and look for money, cook, and then later on come and collect the money. It's difficult, okay? And most people are not rich. Most cooks, if they hear you <laughs> put it the way you did and you see them realistically on the ground doing it, they don't got, have the money. So long and short, in your view, the school feeding program is collapsing or has collapsed. Which is which? It's fast collapsing because most schools are not even cooking. And those who cook, we have specified food items for them to cook, like rice and beans and egg or... Uh, plantain, palava sauce, whatever. You go to lots of schools, they eat, eating cocoa. You know cocoa? I know cocoa. Yes. Porridge. Porridge. Cornmeal porridge. Cornmeal porridge, simplicity. Now, you recall in 2007, the sole financiers, the Dutch government, withdrew funding uh, for the school feeding program. It was still under your management, and they cited failure to abide by the laid down rules and regulations. You can't absorb yourself totally from no, this no, I collapse. Have. Oh, I can. Oh, definitely. Look, they came in to help with the budget for the government, a business between them and the government. Okay? They themselves, the Dutch, were using me to more or less expose the program to other countries, okay? So that is not the reason. I'm coming to the reason. You know, at times when you get assistance from some people, 
they take over as if the Ghanaian is not capable of running the show. And that's what they were doing. They were trying to tell you, stop, do this this way, that way. And I would tell them, listen, we know what we are doing. If you want to give the money to us, don't let's turn us into beggars, okay? And tell us, go and do research. When the whole thing is practical, the child was the food. Give the money to the government and let the government decide. If we have to do research, we'll come to the time to do research. You see? So there were differences like that. If you had asked me this question before, I'd, I would have brought a book that the Dutch people, uh, their leader, wrote to praise my efforts in the school feeding, how I lifted it and made it work. Give us a summary of that since you didn't bring it. Oh, it's, 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 it's a nice uh, testimonial in, a, in, a, in an ancient book, in a book that was written by a Dutch on Ghana. And he had written it beautifully to our friend, Dr. Mwakutufo, and they started saying, uh, we appreciate your hard work and dedication and for bringing this thing successful at this point and all that kind of, you know, praises. So anybody, I'm in politics, and you run into political clashes and all that, that to me should be well established. It has nothing to do with any other. That's why I insisted. Hey, come on. In Ghana, when you are somewhere, they sack you. Somebody more powerful than you sacks you. Uh, the first thing people start thinking, he's chopped some money. He squandered some money. Did you, chop, maybe, did you chop some money? How can I chop money? I'm already a businessman. I put <laughs> money into children's programs and funds. Well, I have a couple of your messages uh, coming in on from Facebook and text. Clement Odrobwating, you write that the school feeding program is worth continuing but needs thorough assessment as to why it is failing. And then uh, Fast Night Yao Tigma says that I think there should be a system for monitoring and evaluation at comment every on that. level. And Frederick Amwaku Neza says that I always say that every project introduced into the system can only be successful if we employ leaders who think about Ghana first rather than their stomachs. This feeding program would have been successful if the right person was chosen to conduct the program. Ghanaians have long been cheated by people whose aim is to cause harm. We now know what to do and we will be we will do that at the day of election. And Obing Tiaku Ebenezer says that a good topic for discussion tonight. The program is not bad in itself, but there is virtually no supervision. And as a result, it seems not to perform its core function, feeding the vulnerable and the poor. That is Obing Tiaku saying that the program doesn't seem to perform its core functions. So, and then Anamala Omar Karbo says that feeding program have lost its aims. It does not function well at all. Initially, the students take meat twice a week, but today they can get Keta School Boys self. Messi Adobia <laughs> says, I think those in charge must be properly assessed. Nice program. Benedicta Sribwabwating says that it should continue. More times uh, you will be teaching and you have to stop and give a student money for food. Because if you don't do that, you will later send the child to the hospital for being unconscious. Solomon Jemfi writes that the feeding program introduced by the government, uh, I think, was a step in the right direction to show how the government was committed to transforming the lives of his people. But the greedy self-interest leaders let it to fall. I think they should be made to face the law uh, to serve as deterrent to others. Al Hassan Shita, you write that it's achieving almost all its intended aims, especially in rural Ghana. It needs some restructuring in order to make it better. Anthony Duku, you also say that that is what our leaders call life changing. We should be ashamed we can't monitor and mention development plan even 
in basic school. Actually, that is why our dear country is still like this. Nyako Theophilos says, those objectives were not met. Even food prepared for them has gone bad. I have facts. Well, the program started, money was given to cooks to buy the food themselves, but this government changed the decision. Um, We'll take a break and then when I, now when you, I return, you, you, then know the you will, you will, I'll give you a chance Beautiful. to comment on these. Stay with us and do don't that. go away. Yes. Welcome back to PM Express and I have uh, with me in the studio, Dr. Amwako Tufo, who is a former school feeding boss. Uh, boss of the school feeding program. Now, Dr. Tufo, before I give you the chance to react to some of our comments, I will tie it in with um, one more question. Now, another major problem that appears to have bedeviled the program from the early, um, I can say the early, let's say to, towards the end of 2008, 2007, was the inability of the system to absorb the increasing number of students as a res pupils, sorry, as a result of the success of the school feeding program. What happened? You know, uh, different people have their different attitudes. Some react to success differently. As far as I was concerned, there was no problem at all to expand it because the way we were doing it and the commitment to do it for the whole nation was there. It is important for those in charge of budgets to know exactly how much, what percentage of this and that. I'm not going to talk about those bottlenecks, but the program was designed in such a way that it was just going in an upward progression like that. Those that had to deal with budgets and all that, that's a different matter, okay? Now, I am so happy that these comments have come. They buttress the points I've been trying to express all along. We've, I've done my research. I've sent people in the field. They follow the, the program as if my life depends on it. Because, and it must be because of the children, okay? These are helpless children that need to be helped. Now let me give you few more besides what we have written here. Dubai Cares is an Arab organization. They have donated money to the government to support health and nutrition and nothing has happened. Nobody knows what's happening to it. Another complaint. Regional and district coordinators are complaining that they are not giving the necessary logistics to do monitoring. You were talking about how it should be monitored. In our time, we had a local implementation committee, like anybody at all walking anywhere, can walk into a school, find out whether the food is okay, whatever, and they had a basis to report. My structure was for them to report to the DC. The DC was not supposed to manage the program because then it will be double standards. They will be checking themselves. But they wouldn't want anybody to shortchange the children. So they would take the punitive actions against cooks. But people were uh, reporting to us anytime they found something wrong and we were able to, to, to go after the success and the monitoring was working very well. That has broken down totally. That is why the report came that regional and district coordinators are complaining. They are not giving necessary logistics to do monitoring. Now, the next point. Now DCs are responsible for choosing caterers. You, you, you can imagine what, what, what is there. Rather than previously, a caterer will come, apply, we will send monitors to go to their place, find out how neat they are, the backgrounds of these people and all that. Now you do have some DCs who are putting their, their, their family people as cooks. Nepotism is at work. They look at nice ladies to give cookings to and all that. I don't want to, to dampen their spirits or, or attack them, but this is what is happening now. 
So it's wrong. It's a conflict of interest. They supply the funds. They choose the cook, supply the funds. At times, you will get a DC who may have about one cook in charge of about six schools. You do investigation, there's a very tight relationship there. And it goes against the children. Um, they have subjected the program to serious abuses, including inefficient, uh, ineffective monitoring. So your, your party is, is, um, is more like appealing to the conscience of Ghanaians to restore it back into power to fix these problems. Oh, right? yes. So yes. what we, would you do different that you couldn't do in eight years? We had done it very well. I'm saying that a new government came. It, you read their manifesto. They didn't have any program, serious program for the, pro, for the project. Okay? We started it. We initiated it. And uh, typically, a, a, a new government comes. They don't want to touch the previous government's programs. But this one was so compelling. Maybe School you didn't feeding. leave sufficient guidelines to make the program I sustainable. Had I had come to TV stations a lot, radio interviews, appealing to NDC government to invite me to discuss, to suggest, to comment. And nobody did. I've done several but that's interviews the problem. like that. I mean, if it, you as a head of the program and the whole ideas, the whole knowledge, the whole innovation and ability to transform lies within your purview or in your mind, you have failed as a leader, you wouldn't say? No, not when the leader goes, comes out into the open, the press, TV, whatever, asking that there are lots of things that I can help you do right and you refuse to invite me can i go and box them to accept it you can't there's a limitation it's a different government employ different people to also try their luck so to speak i've been on the radio and tvs a lot i'm surprised that you you, you don't but seem if, to if you it. really wanted to help would tv and radio be the platform of reaching government you could have gone there gone in where Gone to the school feeding program, for example, to volunteer. I expertise. went to the ministry. I went to the school feeding. Those are not the authoritative bodies. I mentioned on one of my interviews that I cannot just go walk into the castle and start asking people to employ me or ask me to help. I said it on the TV and, and, and radio. Now, it was up to somebody to say, look, Quietly, we are finding difficulty in doing this. Can you help us? I'll be more than happy because the children, and I wasn't interested in politics or school feeding. I was interested in the program itself. That is why I volunteered to come out. And I made some frail efforts and demands, and nobody called me. And, and, and that is why I'm sitting here again today talking about the kinds of things that are going wrong. And of course, we've done it right before. The MPP government had done it before. I don't like putting labels on governments and all that. But for emphasis, they've done it before. It worked. NDC came because it wasn't their original program. They haven't been successful in so handling it. So you wouldn't say anything now, has worked at all with the school feeding program? Most things have NDC? not worked. Most things have not worked. You've, you've heard me complain about a lot of things. They haven't worked. You go to schools now, and in some of those programs, I asked the, the, uh, the press people, go down yourselves, go to schools, and ask your questions. Go and taste the food. Where they have to give them some nutritious food like uh, apim and contumere. The kids are, are drinking cocoa. You see what I mean? And stuff like that. And do you blame the cooks? The cook is not paid. She's borrowed money and she's running away from suppliers. Some suppliers catch up with them. They beat them up. These are things that are happening. I, I, was, I was shy to so, mention so this. So if, if it is that bad now, may I ask you again? Yes. Should the program be scrapped? Never. So when your party is voted into power, 
Can we you will, resuscitate we it? We will resuscitate it. That is why I said... Are you not saying this because you are on the other side of the no, political divide? That you want votes, it. really? No, 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 no. Get me straight. What I am saying is that we started the thing. We know what it is. We knew the initial teething problems. We developed it, implemented it, made it work. But you are now not the only comes, repository of knowledge. No. No, but they've tried several, several people, and it hasn't worked. I am not boasting. Mind you, that is not part of me at all. I'm saying, as we sit here, the two of us, not everybody can come and sit in your seat because you have a style of asking questions and doing that's your job, that's your business. What I'm saying is that when this program, by God's grace, God led me to bring it to this country and started it. It worked. Now it's not working. The reasons have been given. No bias. I'm saying the public should give it back to the government that makes it work. Do, it you, want, do you want your previous job back? No. You don't want no, to be no, school no, feeding no, boss? No, 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 no. Look, people get up. Can you imagine somebody? getting up and going into radio stations and saying, I've fed the kids with rotten tomatoes. Broke my heart. I sue them, and, and then, of course, we have, uh, we have chopped money. I said, beautiful, because this can be proving. I sue them. Big names, so they are now big, big people. At that time, they were fighting to come to, to power. Therefore, they started lying. Now they are big people. But at that time, when I sued them, they started running away from the bailiffs. So one day, one of them met me. Who said, are these big people? <laughs> you should know, you know, at that time, the demonstrators and the big talkers. Who are these big talkers? After I, this I program, don't remember. A lot of people know them. Really? You see, we've moved on. When I see them, I greet them. There was, once I was at... Uh, airport with one of them, I said, do you remember I was chasing you? The bailiff was chasing you to come and prove your point. Later, another one that I made said, ah, but you too. Do you believe anything we're saying? It's what politics wanted to hit you. That was it. They are Ghanaians. Well, Dr. Amakutufo, so tell me finally before I let you go, three things that your party will do different if giving the mandate to rule this country in restoring the food uh, school feeding program, which you say is collapsing. Everybody knows it's collapsing. Everybody knows we did it right. But the we government will, will not repeat. agree with you that it is collapsing. Oh, but, oh you, you read all those comments from people. Different people called in and you heard about their comments. And I'm challenging you and all the pressmen in this country. Just go out there. Go to the schools. See tomorrow what they will eat. See one week what they will eat. The cooks are not paid. One of the things I would do, or help the one who will be in charge, is that make sure all the women are paid through the bank. That's first level of accountability. That's what you do when That's you come exactly into power. That's exactly what I'll do. That's one of the recommendations I've been telling all the time. What else would you do when your party wins? Two, the menu is based on every region, what they produce, and what is nutritional. So there is data and information solidly prepared by the MPP group that is fit for every region. They've thrown it away. We will bring it back. You see, so as to in, uh, help local farmers who produce those things to stem up their production and make more money for themselves, fight poverty at that lower level. You want me to continue? Lots Thank you very much, we, Dr. We Amako Tufo, for we'll your time right. on PM Express. I'm grateful. And uh, to, to you out there, we're also grateful for your time. A few more messages before we go. Or being Tiaku, you say that a good topic for discussion tonight. The program is not bad in itself, but there is virtually no supervision. As a result, it seemed not to perform its core functions. And this one uh, from an anonymous 
texter. He says that the program is duly jeopardized with the poor administration of the Bahama-led government. With hope, the visionary leadership of the MPP will restore it. And Gideon Masari, you say that the NDC is collapsing the program by their cheap propaganda. And Swansea uh, Aninakwa says none of these aims have been achieved since. Oh God, save Ghana. And Fred uh, Nantiera better, uh, no, says that better to stop it because it is not well managed. And Clement Odrobwating, you say the school feeding program is worth continuing by needs thorough assessment. We've read that already. And Kwamina Boboshanti Isaac says, okay, okay, okay. He means okay <laughs> with the program. And Fast Night Yao Tega says, I think there should be a system of monitoring and evaluation at every level. Thanks for your messages and your text contributions. And thanks for staying with us. Join us again tomorrow for another interesting edition of PM Express. Good night.